Hi class, it is Mr. Dresser. We will be learning some more math today. Hey, wait a second. You're not Mr. Dresser. I'm Mr. Dresser. But hey, you like Nike too, huh? Uh huh. Yeah, today is favorite brand day in our virtual spirit week. We're both some Nike boys. All right, keep going working on your stuff over there. See ya, Calvin. I'm Mr. Dresser. Okay, whatever. All right, anyway, moving on. So today we're actually going to review completing the square. Uh, we're going to do a few more examples and then start to look at what happens if completing the square doesn't work. All right, so starting off, completing the square. Our first step was we need the C value to be moved to the other side. So we get M squared plus 20M. And then hopefully you remember, we're going to add in a new C value. And then the other side of this problem is now negative 54 plus whatever that new C value is going to be. So this is the number that we're going to add to both sides. At this point, we're going to make our square, right? It's still a box, but this one we can call a square because it's going to be a perfect square. We're going to put our first term in our first box. We don't know our last term, but we do know to make the perfect square, we're going to take our middle term and split it in half. So 10m, 10m. We can now work around the outside, which gives us m, m plus 10 plus 10. And that new c value that we're going to add to both sides is 10 times 10, which is 100. We're going to add the 100 to both sides. We now have taken this trinomial and turned it into a perfect square. It factors now into M. Sorry, I almost put an X because we usually use X's. But it factors to M plus 10 squared, right? M plus 10, M plus 10. The other side is now negative 54 plus 100, which is 46. Since we have a binomial squared, we know we can use the square root method. Take the square root of both sides. M plus 10 equals square root of 46. I'm going to try the factor tree. I know I can take out a 2 because it's even. So that gives me 2 times 23. But when I try to break down 23, it's also a prime number. So there is nothing I can simplify that to. So square root of 46 cannot be simplified. We're going to leave it as plus or minus square root 46. Finally, to finish solving it, we want the m by itself. So subtract 10, subtract 10, and we get m equals negative 10 plus or minus square root 46. Completing the square. All right, example number two. We want the C to go to the other side. Gives me A squared minus 4A plus our new C value equals 6 plus our new C value. We're going to make our square. First term, first box. Split the middle. That way, these two boxes do add to the negative 4a. And then to find our new c, we're going to factor out the a. That has to be a to get negative 2a. That's minus 2, minus 2. And to fill in our last box right here, we're going to do negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. So the new value that gets added to both sides is a positive 4. This side now factors perfectly into this problem here. So it becomes a minus 2 squared. The right side is now 6 plus 4, which is 10. Take the square root of both sides, and we get a minus 2 equals plus or minus square root 10, because the only factors of 10 are 5 and 2, so there are no pairs. It can't be broken down. We leave it as square root 10. And then finally, add the 2 to both sides, and we get our a is equal to 2 plus or minus square root 10. Again, this is two solutions, 2 plus the square root of 10 and 2 minus the square root of 10.
All right, um, two more problems. Um, the biggest difference on this one is we have a number here and we also have a number over here, that's fine. We know that we want it to end up being x squared minus 6x plus a blank. So I need to move this negative 29 to the other side. So I'm gonna add 29. x squared minus 6x. We no longer have anything here, which is perfect. We're gonna find what that new number is. And then over here we have 5 plus 29, which is 34. And then whatever we add in is our new number. We have to make sure we add it to both sides. Make our square. First term, first box. Split the middle. Negative 3x, negative 3x. That way we're still adding up to the negative 6. And then... In order to find this term here, we're going to take out our common factor, factor around the outside. And in order to get this box, we have to do negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. So plus 9, plus 9. Again, by finding this number here, we found a number that makes this trinomial factor into a perfect square which this is the perfect square that it factors to. So it factored to x minus three times x minus three, also known as x minus three squared. The right side is 34 plus nine, so 43. Take the square root of both sides. x minus three equals positive and negative square root 43 which 43 is a prime number, we can't use the factor tree. So we leave it as square root of 43. And then finally add the three to both sides. And we get x equals three plus or minus square root 43. All right, hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this. Our next problem, same thing, we want to make this zero, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides, which gives us x squared plus 18x plus our unknown term equals negative 10 plus 12, which is 2, plus our unknown term. Make our square, first term, first box, split the middle term, Half of 18 is 9, so 9x and 9x. And then factor around the outside. And we should get a nice, perfect square, which leaves us with a new C value of 81. We're going to add 81 in there. But again, if we're going to add 81 to the left side of the problem, we have to add the 81 to the right side as well. Our new trinomial on the left is a perfect square, x plus 9 squared, and then 2 plus 81 is 83. Uh, just a quick side note, the reason we call it completing the square is we're finding this number that literally completes this square and makes it a perfect square. So anytime that we're doing a problem where we're completing the square, try to remember that that means we need this to be a perfect square and we're figuring out what number completes that square so that it is in fact a perfect square. Anyway, continuing on, once we have that perfect square, we're going to take the square root. I can try the factor tree with 83, but 83 is also a prime number, so we're going to leave that as square root 83. Don't forget your plus minus. And then finally, subtract 9 on both sides. x equals negative 9 plus or minus square root 83. So again, completing the square is something we do typically when factoring doesn't work. Um, if a problem can be factored, I would recommend factoring it, but that's just me. All right, hmm, uh-oh, anytime I put that, that means something tricky's coming up, right? What about these ones? Okay, well, I'm just gonna do it. Mr. Dresser's been teaching me. So I'm gonna move that negative 14 to the other side. Get x squared plus 7x plus my blank 
equals 14 plus my blank. I'm going to put that first term in the first box, and I'm going to split the middle. Well, I can do that. I mean, half of 7 is 3.5. I know how much you guys love decimals, though, right? <laughs> 3.5, I can still take out my common factor of x. This has to be plus 3.5, plus 3.5. Now I need to multiply 3.5 times 3.5. Now let me grab my calculator. That's 12.25. So 12.25 is my new c value. Add that to both sides. Now I could keep going on this problem. We could actually solve it and it wouldn't be that bad. It's just decimals. Um, but typically, if we have an odd number in the middle, because we're getting decimals and because it makes things a little bit uh, more cumbersome, look that word up, uh, or a little bit more challenging, we typically go away from completing the square if we have to split the middle and get a decimal. So we could keep going, but we're not going to. We're just going to say, mm, I think I'll pass on completing the square for this one. Um, and don't worry, we will give you another way to solve it so we can still solve it. All right, um, let's try this other one. If we go ahead and start this one here, all right, the C value is already over here. And put my A in the first box. I'm going to split the middle. But something doesn't seem right, because if I take out x as my common factor, this would have to be 3x. And if this is 3x and this is x, is that a perfect square anymore? No, it's not, right? Because those aren't the same sides. So, I mean, I guess I could take the square root of 3x, and the square root of 3 is like 1.6. 7, I think, 1.7x, and then this would have to be 1.7x, but now it's just getting kind of messy, right? Getting kind of ugly. So, if my magic trick works, here we go. If the middle term coefficient, or b value, is an odd number, or not an even number, we are not going to recommend completing the square. We're going to find a different way. Or, if the leading coefficient, or a value, leading coefficient, it's the first term, uh, is not one, we're gonna recommend not using complete the square. So again, completing the square if your b is odd, or if your a is not one, we could do it, but it gets a little bit messy. We'll, we'll let you do that in like pre-calculus or something. But for now, we're gonna use a different method. So, just in case you're not paying attention. Stop! Stop! I don't know why I did that. All right, anyway. Uh, we recommend you complete the square if, only if your first term has a value of one. So if it starts off with x squared, that's good. Okay, if it's something else, if it's like three x squared, stop right now. Don't do the rest of the problem. It's gonna be tricky. We don't want that or if your b value is even. So if you're doing a problem and it's x squared, which is good, right, one, one x squared, but then you get plus five x, as soon as you see that your b value is not even, stop, we're gonna find a different way. So how are we going to solve it if it can't be factored? Because trust me, if you factor this, it's not going to work. You can't multiply to negative 14 and add to 7. At least not with whole numbers. Uh, and we just said don't complete the square with that because you have an odd b value. So how are we going to solve this? Well, tune in tomorrow to find out. Have a great day, Titans. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're keeping up with your work. We really do miss you guys. Um, wish you the best and hopefully, hopefully we'll get to see you before this year is out. Take care.